humans come from? Did we come from gorillas? No! No! Did they try to teach you this in school, that you come from gorillas? No! no. How many of you have had them try to teach you in school that you come from gorillas yet? Well, you know what? If they haven't yet, they're going to tell you that. Has anybody ever heard of the word evolution? All right. What does evolution mean? Can somebody tell me what evolution is? Anna, what is evolution? They believe that you come from monkeys and not from God. They believe you come from monkeys and not from God. That's pretty, that's pretty much the, the gist of it. Evolution believes that... There was this ball of slime billions and billions of years ago, and this ball of slime come crawling out, became a fish, then became a lizard, then became a bird, and then became a gorilla of some kind, and then that gorilla became us. Now, does that sound like a fairy tale or what? Fairy tale. All right. Well, how many of you know that there is one book, there's one book that we can guarantee that is scientifically accurate, that tells us exactly how you and I got here. Does anybody know what that book is? The Bible. The Bible. That's right. We call the Bible the history book of the universe. Because in the book of Genesis, God tells us exactly how he made the heavens and the earth. How many know how many days it took God to create the heavens and the earth? Anybody Six. know? Six. That's right. What did he do on the seventh day? Rest. He rested. So let's just go back and let's recap a little bit. How many of you know what day that God created man? Anybody tell me what day God created man? Jonathan, what day was it? The sixth day. That is correct. What, did, what day did God create monkeys? Huh? What, Anna? The sixth day. You're right. God made the monkeys on day six, and he made the humans on day six. Now, if he made them both on the same day, it'd be impossible for one to turn into the other, right? But people who do not believe the Bible, who do not believe that the Bible is the history book of the universe, people that don't believe that, they, all, they don't believe anything that we're telling them, so we can't tell them that this is what the Bible says. So, in other words, what they try to do is the Bible tells us that the earth is a certain age. Does anybody know how old the Bible is? Uh, how old the Bible says the earth is? Kevin, how old does the Bible say the earth is? Around 6,000 years. In fact, in one lesson that I taught, we were able to figure out through using the Bible that the earth is 6,014 years old approximately. By using the Bible, we can discover the age of the earth because we have what we call genealogies. And I'm going to tell you what genealogies is. Have you ever heard the word family tree? Yes. All right, so you can trace back your family tree, you know, your grandma, grandpa, your great grandma, grandpa, your great great grandma, grandpa. Well, the Bible actually has the family tree of Adam all the way from Adam to the birth of Christ in the Bible. And we can trace that back and we can know from the birth of Christ all the way back to find out how old the earth is. And we can track the earth back to about 6,014 years old because we used the Bible. And the Bible is legitimate. It has been proven. It was written by how many authors? Does anybody know how many authors wrote the Bible? Huh? Is it like 120? No, it was written by 40 different authors. 66 different books over the course of over 2,000 years. And none of the Bible contradicts itself. Everything that they said in the Old Testament is still true today in the New Testament. And that's because we know that we can prove the Bible because we know the Bible is true. There are people who they call archaeologists. You ever heard of an archaeologist? Anybody know what an archaeologist is? Anybody know? Kevin, what's an archaeologist? Somebody who digs up fossils. That's correct. So they go back out and they dig things up and they can find out how old it is. Well, two archaeologists dig up a bone and one of them looks at it and says, well, this is 65 million years old. And another one picks it up and says, this one's 4,000 years old, but it's the same bone. Why do they not agree? Does anybody know why two archaeologists would never agree? Anna, why do two archaeologists never agree? That's right, because one would believe in God and the other one believes in evolution. Those of us that believe in God know better that the earth is not millions of years old. Well, if the earth isn't millions of years old, how long ago did dinosaurs live? How many millions of years ago did dinosaurs live? Does anybody know? Well, the earth wasn't even here millions of years ago. 
If the Earth was not here millions of years ago, then they couldn't have lived 65 million years ago like scientists want you to say. Scientists are going to go around telling you that you could, that you could find a dinosaur 65 million years ago, but then they all died out. All of them died in one cataclysmic, awful accident. A meteor came crashing down and caught the whole Earth on fire, and they were all destroyed, and all the dinosaurs died. But somehow... A dinosaur still evolved into a bird, which evolved into an ape, which still evolved into me and you. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not no armpit scratching ape, and I don't have any idea how on earth that all, a dead dinosaur can evolve into a live human. I just don't get that. But, yeah. but they also say, well, I don't understand how you could think that there's this God that's always been there that's created me and you. Now, which one of those is harder for you to believe? That there's a God that always has been and always will be that created me and you, or that we all started from pond scum from an explosion? I mean, is that, is that not the stupidest thing you've ever heard? But scientists want me and you to swallow that pond scum formed from an explosion... And then all of a sudden, out comes beautiful me and you from an explosion. Now, I like explosions. Any boys in here like to blow stuff up? Oh, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I have a little problem. Don't do this at home, but I have a little problem. I like fire. I think fire is really stinking cool. I mean, I love to play with fire, but don't do it, all right? Don't do it until you're old enough to do it on your own without getting busted by your mom and dad. I love to play with fire. I've blown all kinds of stuff up. I really like melting Barbie dolls. It is really cool. Anna has some Barbie dolls the cat chewed, and they were fair game for me. I melted their faces off. It's cool, but it never produced life. No matter how many explosions I've ever done, I've never had anything come to life from me blowing stuff up. It just don't happen. See, in order for science to be real, science has to be something they call observable and repeatable. So, in order for me to believe what scientists are saying about this explosion, I have to observe it and be able to repeat it. So... Observable means something that I can watch, and repeatable means something that I can do over and over again. Well, they believe that by mere chance, billions of years ago, in fact, it was 4.1 billion years ago, an explosion happened. And all of a sudden, all of the right things happened. The Earth got hit by an asteroid, which tilted it on its axis, which allowed the sun to be able to shine. And for some reason, the Earth is just lucky. Because if it was just a hundred foot closer to the sun, we'd all burn up. And if it was just a hundred foot further away from the sun, we'd all freeze to death. So the earth just by pure chance and luck landed right where it was supposed to, tilted at the right axis so that we could all survive and life could grow on this planet. By pure chance and accident. Now, that's never been observed or repeated on any other planet. There's no other planet in our solar system that has got any kind of life-giving potential in it at all. None. So our earth is just lucky, right? No. Or did God create the heavens and the earth like he said in Genesis 1-1? God created it. But we know that because we've got the Bible. And the Bible is our basics for everything that we understand. Now I want to ask you a question. I want to show this picture to you. I wanted to get these on the screen, but I lost my CD and I can't find it. Anybody tell me what you see here? Wait, 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 let me just ask you this question. How many of you, when you see this picture, see a ugly old woman? Does anybody see an ugly old woman? Raise your hand if you see an ugly old woman. It, raise your hand if you see a beautiful young woman in this picture. How many of you see a beautiful young woman? Stand up if you see the beautiful young woman in this picture. All right. Several of you see the beautiful young woman. Now stand up. Sit back down. Those of you that see the ugly old woman, stand up. Wow. How many of you see both a beautiful young woman and an ugly old woman together? You see them both? Do you see them both? Do, I, do you guys want me to point them out to you? Right here is the nose and the chin 
This is a feather in this woman's hair. There's her hair, and she's wearing a scarf, and she's got on a beautiful fur coat, and this is the young woman. The old woman, however, this is her big honking nose. There's her sad mouth, her chin, and this is her eyeball. You guys see the ugly woman and the beautiful woman? See, we all have the same picture. Everybody can have a seat now. We all have the same picture to look at, but yet some of you saw it a little differently. There was a group of people over here that saw things just a little differently than everybody else in the room. And why is that? We're looking at the same picture. Well, that's what science scientists do. They're looking at the same evidence. They see this gigantic bone from a T-Rex, and they go, this dinosaur lived millions of years ago. And the reason why he thinks that is is because somebody convinced him that evolution was true and that the earth is very, very old. But yet a creationist, somebody who believes in the creation and believes in God, is going to pick that bone up and look at it and go, huh, this probably is at least 4,000 years old, maybe older. 4,000 years versus 4.1 billion years is huge difference. I mean, huge difference. I can come up with a thousand dollars, but I cannot come up with a billion dollars. I can't do it. That is a big difference in, in not only money, but also in time. 4.1 billion years ago, an explosion. Hmm. I don't believe that. I believe that 6,000 years ago, God spoke and bang, everything came into place. So, we know that the Bible is the history book of the universe. And we know that because we believe in God. And we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And so because of that, we've come to know the truth. And the Bible says that you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about the truth. And we're going to cover it in seven seeds. In fact, you know what, Sister Lori? I may just make up some bookmarks with these seven C's on them. How many of you think that you would like to earn, this, earn 200 points to learn the seven C's of creation? Anybody think that would be a fun challenge for you? How would you like to have a bookmark with those? I'm going to make those up next week. How's that? How many of you are going to learn it if I make the bookmarks? Will you learn it? All right, I'll make some bookmarks with these. Let's start with the seven C's. And this is how they're so easy to remember. The seven C's of creation starts out at creation. Everybody say creation. Creation. And then the second C is corruption. Corruption. And then catastrophe. catastrophe. Then confusion. confusion. Then Christ. Christ. Cross. Cross. And consummation. consummation. Okay, now I'm going to explain all of these really, really quickly. The first C of creation is creation. That is the day, 6,014 years ago, that God created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in them. He made them on the first day. The next C is corruption. The corruption came when Adam and Eve was in the garden and they made a boo-boo, right? Yeah. <laughs> they ate the fruit of the tree that they wasn't supposed to touch. Big boo-boo. Not only was that boo-boo so big, let me tell you how big that boo-boo is. Because that boo-boo was so big, you and I are now considered sinners and needed a savior. You and I have took on their corruption and now we were born as a sinner. You know what that means? Born as a sinner, that means you are born where you are actually born separated from God because of sin that is in our lives. Because of what happened to Adam and Eve. Did you know that the decisions that they made not only affected them, but every single person that was their child ever since then? So that means that the decisions that you make right now could be the decisions that you will make that could affect your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. That's why it's important we make good decisions. The next decision, the next C is catastrophe. This is where God said, okay, that's it. I've had enough. I'm destroying this earth and everything that's in it. But Noah, the Bible says, found grace in the eyes of God. Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives all got on board the ship. And God saved them plus all of the animals, two of every kind of animal, which we'll be talking about kinds here a little bit more later. Then the next C was confusion. After the flood, they began to grow and more people started being born and they all started staying in one spot. And God says, uh-uh, I told you to go into the whole world and populate the entire world. 
And so because they wouldn't do what they were supposed to do, God stopped their tower building and they caused their, ma their languages to be confused and nobody could understand each other anymore. Finally, they found some people who could kind of talk like they did and they went and started their own tribes and their own places and started moving all over the planet as God had told them to do in the first place. And that is the confusion scene. After that, thousands of years later, here comes Christ. Jesus was born to a virgin Mary, and he was born and he lived and he died on the, the next sea, the cross, for you and me, so that we could be saved from the corruption, which is our curse. And we'll talk a little bit more about the curse later. And the final C is consummation. And that is the last C that's on here because the last thing that's going to happen is Jesus Christ is going to come back and take all of us who accepted his, sa his saving grace on the cross and take us all to be to heaven with him forever. How many are looking forward to that C? Yeah. yeah, that's a C yeah. that I'm living for. The C that I can't wait to get out of here and make my way to heaven. Now, the... When you talk to anybody who believes in earthly science, and what I mean by that is if you talk to somebody who believes that the earth is millions of years old, they are looking at the earth differently than the way you and I are looking at it. So now, you may not have got that far in your school studies yet, but how many of you have seen the movie Ice Age? The time is so oh. How many of you have seen the movie called Dinosaurs? How many of you have seen any movie like, say, Jurassic Park? Anybody ever seen that? Okay. How long ago did they tell you in those movies that dinosaurs lived? Millions and millions of years ago. That's right. So now, you may not have heard it in school, but it has made its way into media. The Ice Age happened millions of years ago. Actually, that's not necessarily true. The Ice Age more than likely took place after the Flood for about 700 years, which we will talk more about that later on this month. We're going to talk about the Ice Age and what happened during the Ice Age. So we're going to, we're going to fill you up with some really good information, some great knowledge about what the Bible truly says. Now why would the world accept this nonsense of evolution? Why would they take that? Does anybody know? Why would they want that? If the Earth was like four billions of billions of years ago, it would probably be probably right about that. That's true because a lot of the things in the Earth got only made long enough to last. You see, there's a reason why that they don't want you to believe in creation or a young Earth. Because you see, when God created the world, He created a series of laws. How about anybody ever heard the law of gravity? Anybody know what the law of gravity is? Come here, let me demonstrate the law of gravity. I'm going to use you because you're my kid and I can. This is the law of gravity. The law of gravity simply says, no, don't hold on to me because it won't work. I can't demonstrate the law of gravity if you hold on to me. Let go. It's okay. The law of gravity says what goes up must come down. Must come down. You see, if I... If I if I throw her in the air, if I throw her in the air, no matter no matter what. No, Dad. Dad, stop. Let me go. No. You see. No, Dad. Dad. You see. Everything that goes up won't stay up because eventually it's gonna come down. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> what goes up comes down. It's a law. You can't change that law because God created the law of gravity. In fact, when it comes down, sometimes it comes down with great and terrible force. What could you imagine if you were higher up than that? What if we took you to the top of the Empire State Building? Or the top of the Eiffel Tower? Uh, How fast do you think you would come down then? It's a law that can't be changed. Our God created laws. Laws like those. I'm thankful for gravity. You want to know why? If there was no gravity, I would float everywhere. 
That'd be awesome. We can walk. Yeah, but if you go up too high, your head would explode. <laughs> Don't you think God was pretty smart in making gravity? Keeping your feet on the ground is a pretty good thing, right? There are so many different laws that scientists have found. They found these laws. Well, do you know that the God of the Bible is also a God of laws? Do you know that? There's a law called the law of sin and death. Does anybody know what that law is? The law of sin and death simply is this. If there's sin in your life, you're dead. Not physically, but spiritually dead. Spiritual death is this. Separation of God and man. When Jesus was dead for those three days when they buried him in the tomb, you know what he was separated from? He was separated from the presence of God for three days. That is the worst death that you could imagine. Because you're not just dead, you're separated from God. You and I don't have to have that separation. You know why? Because Jesus Christ came so that you and I would not be separated from him. The law of sin and death is similar to the law of gravity. Because if there's sin in your life, you will fall. And you will fall for a very long time in eternity in hell. But Jesus died to overcome that law. Not to, not to abolish it, not to wipe it away, because there's another law. There's the law of grace. And when you receive grace in your life, you get to go live with Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. And so you don't have to fall prey to the, the law of gravity. So let's go back and let's go back to our little example I gave with Anna. The law of gravity says what goes up must come down. But if it don't go up, it don't have to fall down, right? And that's the same way with us. If we accept grace, we don't ever have to fall down. We never have to take that route because we can choose to make our own decisions and make right decisions. So, here's a timeline of history according to what scientists think. And I'm going to cover this really quick. They believe that there was a Big Bang. Everybody say Big Bang. Big bang. Yeah, so they believe that a big explosion took place and it formed the sun and stars from that explosion. And from that, the earth and the moon were byproducts of things that were crashing and banging into each other. And so all these dust particles came together and formed the earth. And somehow from that, it was all just a big dry blob planet, kind of like the moon. And then suddenly, water started to form out of nowhere. Then the first cells, then fish, and the first plants, then sharks, then amphibians like lizards and stuff like that, then insects, then reptiles, then mammals, then whales, and then you get a bird, and then a monkey, and then a human shows up. That's what they think happened. But I can tell you all of that happened in just a matter of six days. All of that happened in six days. But scientists think that that took millions and millions of years and death. The problem is, is man theories say that the earth was built upon a lot of death and disease and struggle. But my Bible tells me that there was no, no death until Adam sinned. And so if Adam would have been the first man, there would have not been all those millions of years of death if he would have been there. So God created us. And he made us special. He made us unique. He made us in his own image. Dr. Dark thinks, as a scientist, Dr. Dark thinks that um, these gorillas are somehow the missing link and that you and I come from gorillas. No. You know what I would say? I would say that Dr. Dark and any other scientist that believes that is probably trying to avoid one of the laws of grace that you and I come to know. Because if there is no God, then that means there's no sin. And if there's no sin, that means there's no punishment for sin. And so people don't want to believe in God because they don't want to believe in the punishment of sin. But how many of you want to believe in God? Because we do know that there is a God. We also know that there is a punishment of sin, but we also know that there's a way to escape it. How many of you know the way to escape the law of sin and death? And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh -huh.